Hello, I'm Rafael Piroman. Welcome to Metro Focus. What can you afford? When it comes to housing in and around New York City, the answer for many seems to be less and less. During this campaign season, just about every candidate is talking about affordable housing and promising that if elected, he or she will build more. But how and what does affordable mean? New York has some of the highest rents in the country. For example, an average one-bedroom apartment goes for more than $2,200, and in Manhattan for more than $3,200. According to the federal government, affordable means that less than 30% of a family's gross income is spent on housing and utilities. So if you make $50,000 a year, that's a maximum of $1,250 a month for rent and utilities. And for that average one-bedroom, you'd have to make more than $88,000 a year. What does it all add up to in the real world? We asked a few New Yorkers. People that I know have been looking for apartments and everything is so expensive. So where are the affordable houses? The rent just keep going up and everything keep going up. I know a lot of people have moved out of New York because it's too expensive. And the main thing that's too expensive is, of course, the housing and the rent. They can't afford the rent. They can't afford to buy into a co-op or a condo situation. A lot of my friends who live in the area who don't have public housing, they are very, it's really hard for them to make rent every month and for them to, you know, find any place to live that's affordable for them in the first place, especially in this area. And joining me now is Becky Kebnick, the director of the Molis Institute for Affordable Housing Policy at New York University's Furman Center for Real Estate and Urban Policy. Becky, welcome. Thank you for having me today. Uh, so affordable housing is a big deal among New Yorkers. Absolutely. What is your definition of affordable housing? So that's a great question because there isn't one definition of affordable housing and it's actually been quite controversial over the last mm -hmm. few years. The federal government, which sets the standard for affordable housing, says that for a family that makes about $77,000 a year for a family of three in New York City, they should be able to afford an apartment that costs about $1,900 a month. Now that's the federal standard. But in New York, actually, most people make around $50,000 a year and can only really afford you know, about $1,200 a month in rent. So that would be what was affordable to them, which is basically paying 30% of their income to rent each month. Is this a, a recent problem, affordable housing uh, in, in New York City, or is it something that's been going on for a while? So it's been going on for a long time. Uh, rents have been unaffordable, especially for very low income New Yorkers, mm -hmm. for decades. But what we're seeing now mm -hmm. is that it's gotten worse than it's ever been. And almost three-fourths of low income New Yorkers are paying more than half of their monthly income towards rent. So it's just getting worse and worse and worse as time goes on. And you can see this even in the homeless system where there are 50,000 people living in shelters every night in New York City. Is this a unique problem to New York City or are all big cities experiencing this? So we recently looked at the five largest cities in the United States to see if this is a unique problem for New York. And what we found is actually it isn't unique, especially for very low income uh, residents. Los Angeles and even Philadelphia have rent affordability problems that are on the scale of New York's. And how would you uh, grade Mayor Bloomberg's uh, efforts to deal with the uh, affordable housing problem here? The Bloomberg administration you know, set out a very ambitious goal of creating or preserving 165,000 units of housing over 10 years, um, which has been the biggest affordable uh, housing plan in the country. So they've been very ambitious, and they're actually on target to reach that goal. Um, they've done a lot of really innovative things, uh, brought new sources of financing, tried to get the private market to create affordable housing. But at the same time, the market's been so hot in New York over the last 10 years, they've barely kept pace with the number of affordable units we're le losing each year. What do you think about those who argue that the mayor has focused too much on housing for middle-income New Yorkers rather than for the poorest New Yorkers? So there has no doubt been a loss of middle-income housing in New York, but there has also been a loss of very low-income housing in New York, and a lot of the mayor's signature projects have been um, focusing on middle-income housing. So the Bloomberg administration has really done a little bit of everything in terms of who they've been targeting, and I think you'll see in the next mayoral administration there might be a shift in that policy. I'm well, talking about the next mayor of New York City. <laughs> this campaign season, as I, I said in the introduction, not just mayoral candidates have made an issue of affordable housing. I know you're, you and your organization are nonpartisan, but have you heard anything that you think would make a significant difference in the affordable housing issue? Well, both candidates, Joe Loda and Bill de Blasio, have actually 
uh, recommended doing even more units, constructing more units and preserving more units than Mayor Bloomberg uh, actually has, has been able to do. So that would obviously make an impact on, on New Yorkers. I would also say that de Blasio in particular has really focused on serving even lower income households than the Bloomberg administration has, which would also make a big difference um, to New Yorkers. But the reality is the next mayor is going to have to do more with less. The federal government is pulling back on its commitment to affordable housing. Um, the real estate market in New York City is really hot, so there's a lot of competition for land. The city doesn't own as much land as it used to. So the next mayor is really going to have to figure out how to get the resources to fulfill these ambitious visions. So what have. is the first step or the key step that the next mayor has to take in order to seriously tackle this issue? So the first step they're going to have to take is say, how am I going to pay for this? <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be the first step. And that's where the, the rubber hits the road, really, on affordable housing. Both candidates agree that affordable housing is really important. There's no disagreement there, but it's really about how are you going to find the resources, the land, the money, to make this a reality uh, for New Yorkers going forward. And also, how do you preserve the affordable housing that New York City already has? New York is very lucky in many ways to have a great deal of public housing, Mitchell Lama housing that serves middle-income households. And all of those programs are you know, at risk for opting out or having those buildings be in really poor condition. So the next mayor is really going to have to focus on how do I keep what I already have, but also get new resources to build new affordable housing. All right, Becky, thank you so much. You're welcome.